us gathered here tonight, most of us probably already know that if we want to really succeed, it's as the scriptures advise, in spiritual terms, eternal terms. If we do, we might be able to place our final exam period in a proper, more gentle, maybe more nuanced perspective and context. So those of us who are students and professors, of course, we encourage scholarship in the world. Yes. But we also know a scholarship outside the world and of the word. This is not a test in the sense that I want to preach at you about extracurricular temptations or tests in our university community. There are many. Lies, laziness, drugs, deceit, alcohol abuse, emotional abuse, you name it, it's here for the taking. Although these exist and could potentially derail our hearts or distract us from the greater good, we don't need a message to tell us that, even if these might kill us or at the least harm us. When I was 20 years old, 21 years old, no preacher could protect me from my own sin, and sin I certainly did. This is probably not a test in the sense that God is testing us. I don't want to imply that God places moral roadblocks in your life in some kind of malicious manner, especially through the vehicle of your college professor. From my understanding and experience, we might blame God, or maybe even the devil, for testing us when we are really only testing ourselves. So much of the demonic drama that distracts us from doing what's good and right comes from our own selfish inventions, or perhaps from our lack of moral intentions, from our own self-interest and short-sightedness. This is not always the case, but I recently was reminded of when God really does test people, uh, because I was re-familiarized this morning reading about the story of Job. And if you think you're being tested, go read Job. Oh my gosh. Uh, this, this kind of brought me to tears this morning. I was reading this in the car on the way from the airport, and I was, I was brought to tears by the fact that I made it home safely before all of this, uh, this weather uh, hit. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, Barbara Brown Taylor, an altar in the world, a geography of faith. And she's getting to the end of the telling, retelling the Job story in her own words. And she says that some people get mad because she thinks that it's kind of a blame the victim narrative and, and Job's kind of pathetic and beat down and God's kind of a little mean and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and she gets to that part of the story and she, this is what she writes. Job does not look beaten to me. He looks like someone whose pain has broken through everything he thought he knew about himself, about life, about God, to deliver him to a new threshold of being. Of course, she writes, he despises himself. He has just received a blast of truest reality which has made his limited, self-absorbed grieving look small by comparison. The dust and ashes are for burying that smaller life, beloved as it was, and stepping into the larger life that he has seen in God's face. This is not a test. Reminded me that the test of the coming week cannot hold a candle to the test to which the gospel attests. Our reading tonight suggests a few things we might be wise to remember during this and every exam season, and in the case of every test we might experience in the world, even when it's a hurdle constructed of our own frustration or lack of imagination. The gospel writer warns against jealousy and competition and shows us, through Jesus and John, the benefit of cooperation between friends, a cup that runneth over. The gospel reassures us of the irrevocable offer of heaven's help, a promise from a loyal and loving God who's greater 
Success was born in straw and bought with blood. Seek God's help through prayer and meditation and practice God's will with action and dedication and we can surpass any trial, pass any test. Sleep deprivation may not offer the best cure for your present procrastination. I'm just saying. And no amount of cramming could, pre could prepare Jesus for the cross. As I overheard a student last week describe to another professor the joyful but sometimes painful learning process of growing old and waking up. I should say growing up, not growing old. This is like a 19, 18-year-old freshman was talking. I overheard a, a freshman speaking to his professor, his English professor, a colleague of mine. Uh, and he was describing how painful it was to wake up in her class. I thought, that's pretty cool. And he said, it hurts, but it's a good hurt. I mean, he was thanking her. It hurts, but it's a good hurt. Let's meditate this week on how this is and this is not a test. And may we welcome the good hurt of life's various tests that prepare us for the greater and greatest test. The sometimes painful and an often joyful reality of waking up to life's perpetual learning and loving. Amen.